Okay, so this is problem 2.10 out of Griffiths. And uh, I had to grab my drawing. Took a little while to get, but basically we have a charge Q sitting in the back here. And we wanna know the flux going through that side of the cube. So flux, flux is going to be the integral, the closed path integral of our E field dotted by DA. Now the big problem here is your E-field, or your, your charge is not in the center of our uh, shape here, our cube, it's in a corner. So that's why I drew this drawing. Essentially what I did is I drew one cubed, I know it's really bad, uh, over here, another one back here, and then another one over here. And then I put four above and four below so that now we have charge Q right in the center there. So that's that guy. Now, if you count all these up, you should find that there are 24 sides of this bigger cube. So there's 24 sides of this bigger cube. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find our total flux and essentially what we're gonna do is divide it by 24. Because of the 24 sides that we have now. And the E field for a point charge, right? Because essentially what we'll get is the flux is equal to the magnitude of your E field times four pi r squared over 24 and the magnitude of the electric field from just a point charge which is what we have here will be the charge over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared so if we plug that into the equation here you get q times 4 pi r squared divided by 24 times 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. And you can see these will cancel, these will cancel. And you end up getting just your Q, the charge, over 24 times epsilon naught. And this is the flux that'll go through any one side of this bigger cube. So the real trick to this is seeing that because the charge is in a corner and not perfectly in the center, we have to create, I guess you can think of as an imaginary bigger cube where Q is at the center. And then from there, we could find the flux that would go through any one of those sides, including the imaginary or the real side that we're interested in. And we can use our flux equation, divide by the amount of sides we have, take advantage of the fact that we know what the E field of a point charge is, and then we can find the flux. So this was kind of, I guess you could say a, uh, out of the box thinking problem. Not very hard, but you have to be kind of clever.